Hello, we are going to be discussing deformers in Toon Boom Hammer. This is a follow-up video to the previous introduction twos on drawings and peg notes. What is a deformer? If a drawing is like a piece of paper and a peg is the hand coming in and moving the piece of paper around, the deformer is like crumpling that piece of paper in your hand and moving it about and deforming it into a different shape. How do we make deformers? So if you have a drawing and you have a shape, you go over to your tool properties, and then we come up to these tools at the top, the rigging tool, and click it. We'll get all of these new options for different deformers. So we have automatic mode, bone, curve, envelope, game, and freeform. If we select something, so say like the bone, we get this little icon, and we can click the top of the shape, the middle of the shape, and the bottom of the shape. So now we have this bone inside of this arm. What we can do is, if we go to our transformation tool, we can grab the corner of the bone and we could bend it. We're deforming the shape. So what do each of the deformers do? We go over to the automatic mode. If you click, 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 it'll make a bone deformer like previous. This will bend stuff like an arm where you have a joint and then a top piece. Moving the top piece will move everything and scaling this middle piece will scale the area of effect. If you drag instead, you'll get a curve deformer like this. So if you move the bottom, it'll bend, it'll curve, but also if you grab the top, it'll move everything. You can do them individually. So here's the bone tool, same deal. Here is the curve. And then the most important one, which is what I recommend you using for pretty much everything, is the envelope. The envelope makes it so if you drag along the outline of a shape, hold Alt to grab the edges and shape them. And then when you've made your very last point, hold Alt and hover over the original point and you'll see this little bullseye and then click and it will connect them. This means that whatever your shape is has its own individual outline that you can control. It also benefits from the fact that you can use it like a curve tool. You don't have to connect the ends. You can create a shape, drag it, and then now you can bend it like a curve, except the top piece won't be the parent and drag everything with it. You can move these two individually into different locations at will, which is way better. This tool, Game Bone Mode, is for games, you can use Toon Boom to make rigs and animations for video games. Not super useful for rigged TV show animations or movie animations, but it does the exact same thing, but it makes a bone. And then at the end we have a freeform deformer, which creates these little points. And if you drag the corner, it'll start warping the shape. This is more used for logos or flags or t-shirts or something that has a design on it or maybe a texture that you need to be able to manipulate because any other deformer will most likely break it. You can also grab this pink little circle and rotate the shape as well. So this is, like I said, for flags. And So what is this actually doing? If we come over here, we'll notice this new group has appeared between the drawing and the peg. If we go in, we'll see bones. The bones are a different part of the deformer. So you can see if we select the bottom, it'll highlight the bottom. If we select the top, it'll highlight the top. If we remove one of these, you'll see it'll only keep one of the pieces. So every time you add a drawing, it'll create more and more bones. Having your deformers in this group like this isn't really amazing because if we make a new drawing shape on the drawing node, then this deformer will also be affecting that shape, which you don't want. Because say you want to turn an arm off because you can't pose it correctly, you need to draw a new arm. So if you try and draw, it'll still have the information of this deformer. For example, let's give this shape a deformer and let's move it like this. And now we want to see our substitutions. We want to make a new drawing and we're going to draw a straight line. But as you see, the straight line is going to bend because it's following the deformer. So you want it so every time you make a new drawing, you get a new deformation chain or a blank deformation chain. So this doesn't happen. How do you do this? 
you want to select your drawing, you want to come up to the same section where you had your rigging tool, come over here to create new deformation chain, click it, and you'll get this group like previously, except this time there's a transformation switch. Not super important to what we're doing. This just means that when we make a new drawing, we will have a new deformation or no deformation on the next drawing. For example, we select our drawing, we go to our tool, we create an envelope, hold down and drag, hold down and drag. Now you have these two pieces. In the group, now there's a one. This is linked to the drawing substitution, which is called one. So we've created a second drawing and we're going to make a circle this time. We're gonna give it a deformer. So now this drawing number two is going to be linked to this group number two. Inside of these groups is the exact same thing as before. It's just separated each of them. So it knows when you switch between the drawings, it's going to switch between the deformers. You might have noticed that it's kind of inconvenient to place deformers, primarily envelope deformers, because you go edge to edge, and then you have to make sure each piece is lined up. So if you go up to this gray area, you can right click, go down to customize, search for this, envelope creator underscore show UI. You can also just type it in and you can find it. Click this arrow to put it over into your tools. Click apply, click okay, and now you have this. So if you grab a shape, this shape will have four sides. So if you make a square, it will always have four sides. That means if you click this tool, you get this pop-up. How many corners does this shape have? Four, create envelope. And now you've created a perfect envelope. It will also follow the shape if you pose it in any particular way. So if you grab the edges, hold the Alt and pull, you get this new shape. You can do the same and it will follow the shape. This can get tricky, however, if you make a new point, like this. So you want five, but you only have four points selected. It will then get confused about where to place the shape and it will just calculate and make an assumption. You can go to five, make a new shape. It'll perfectly do it. But if you make this five shapes and then you decide, you know, I don't actually need this corner. And then you try and create a four point deformer. It will then know that there was five points here, but not know where it went. So you'll see that the deformer isn't lined up anymore to the shape because it doesn't know where to place it. So if you're using this tool, never delete points by hand. Instead, if you make a shape and you don't need it any longer, just undo and it'll fix that problem. You can now go back and make another four point shape. If you've made a shape and you've deleted the point, and then you've given it an envelope like this, where it's not perfectly lined up, it will most of the time place the point near the deformer point. So what you can do is you can manually place it on that point and you can see how long the handle was made. So you can grab the drawing handle and holding Alt, move it over on top. You can do this for every corner. If you have a corner like this that doesn't have any handles on it, you can hold Alt and drag. And now you've got a near perfect deformer. When making a shape, it will always place the starting position on the top left corner. So you'll notice if we bend this corner, it'll even out with its counterpart and they'll start moving smoothly. But this corner, never does that. It never locks on. It's always free form. So if you're making a shape and you know a corner is going to be animated a lot, never have it be this corner. What you can do is, if you know it's always going to be the top left, you can just by hand rotate it. So now that top left piece is the bottom right piece. So if this piece is somewhere that's never going to be used, perfect. Or you can use these tools, like I've shown in the in the introduction to drawing video, you can use these tools. So if I click up, it's now there. If I click across, it's now there. 
So you'll kind of get a hang. So create envelope. It's back over here. If I use this, create envelope. It's now over here. There's a couple of tools we can use in the tool properties. So if we grab this piece and maybe we want to move two deforms at the same time, if we try and drag select, it won't let us. So we can come over to this tool, control selection mode, so we can grab both deformers at the same time. We can do even more by coming up here and selecting show manipulator, which means that we can actually rotate them like so. If you've deformed something and you don't like the shape or you wanted to go back to its original shape, you can click on the shape and hit B until you're on the deformer, or you can come over to your node view and drag select over the deformer, and then come up to this little button over here, reset current keyframe, and it will reset the keyframe to what it originally was. Now, if we fill this shape and try and deform, you'll see eventually you'll start to get this cracking, which means that even though the line is being deformed on the outside, we've now left no room for the fill, so it starts to break outside of the deformation. This is why sometimes when you want to make a bigger shape, you actually make a smaller version of the shape, give it its deformer, and then pose it to be the bigger shape. Hopefully the cracking doesn't occur as much. See, we can get a lot closer this time. So how can you use deformers practically? We're gonna go back to the classic ball that we've done in the previous two tutorials, just to show how a deformer can be used in animation. So I've removed the squash and stretch from this shape. So now it's just the ball bouncing. Come over here and click create new deformation chain. We're gonna to come to envelope mode and we're going to draw four points. So now that our shape is created, we're going to go down to the bottom, pull down, then grab the top, pull down, then grab the bottom, pull up. So now we get more of this squash at the edges that we couldn't get previously with just a drawing or a peg. We click on it, we come up to this button, reset keyframe, we can squash it, stretch, go previously again, go up, reset, and then we can copy these frames. So there we go. We've created squash and stretch with an envelope deformer. So that should wrap up not only this video, but the three preliminary rigging videos that I have covering drawings, pegs, and deformers. With those fundamentals, you should be able to rig pretty much anything. We're going to talk about cutters and palettes and all of the smaller niche things that will make your rigs better in the following videos. I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching.